Hey, you guys, this is Christina with Leads and Leverage. I help real estate agents go from unknown agent to local market domination, all through the power of Facebook. And the key here is that I teach you and show you how to do it in a way that you actually like it. You like yourself, you like the journey, you like your clients. So with that said, today is another episode of The Ribbit Show. I have not done a Ribbit Show in forever. And I wanted to dive into something that we're noticing as ad buyers and you guys are noticing as you, you may not be really noticing, you may not be putting enough money into Facebook ads to truly notice this. However, it's happening. What's going on is ad costs are going up. And um, that, that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to give you a couple of hacks that you can use to lower your ad costs. Because yeah, there are some things that you can do that will absolutely lower your ad costs and increase your conversions, getting more people to respond to your ad. So today we're gonna talk about, like I said, um, basically your ad costs. And let me go ahead and pull up this so I can see your questions, see your comments. I'm on another um, third party application to connect with you guys today. So I wanted to make sure that I can actually see your comments. So give me just one second, comment in. Super duper. You guys are awesome. Thank you. So today, I like I said, I want to talk, talk about it. I know I've ha I've seen some members talking about this. Ad costs are expensive. It's costing me this much for a page like, or it's costing me this much for an opt-in. And we're always on the hunt to try and lower our ad costs. Absolutely. We absolutely want to do that. But that comes from all the different tweaks that you can do. So here's why this is important. So if you already have what you think is a pretty good ad cost, say it's costing you $2 to get opt-ins, um, opt-ins, like people who actually opt in with your email address. You're like, you know what? I brought that down for $4. That's a great number. Here's the thing for every, for every, tweak that you do to it, you can, you can lower as much as possible. And you know what, you'll lower to a point where it's not possible to lower it anymore. But here's the other thing, here's what's coming. And I've shared this before, but right now, $80 billion is being put into TV commercials and print advertising right now by the big guys, right? And so that's what they're putting into TV commercials and print advertising. Nobody's watching TV commercials. So when they realize that what they've been doing is no longer working for them. They're going to shift their ad budgets, their ad costs. And guess where they're going to shift them to? They're going to shift them to where the eyeballs are. And since Facebook has they come more than more active users than Instagram, Twitter, and WhatsApp combined, that's where they're going to put their ad costs, which means, or their ad budgets, which means that ad costs for you as a real estate agent in small town USA or wherever you are, your ad costs are going to go up. So what can you do to hack it? What can you do to make sure that you are not really negatively affected? We're all going to have rising ad costs, but how can you avoid the extremes? The first thing I'm going to talk to you guys today about, hello, Alfredo, Al Alfredo. I'm so sorry. Hello, Alf. Is it Alf Alfredo? I'm so sorry. I, I caught that fast and I just totally butchered your name. So I apologize. Hi, Jennifer. Good morning, you guys. Northern California, Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Is it so cold up in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin? Because it's still cold here. Snow's gone, but it's cold. So we're going to talk about this. There are actually, I'm going to start with the very basic. So the very basics of this has to do with having your Facebook business page set up in a way that, in a sense, hacks the algorithm. And I say hacks loosely because basically you're setting it up in a way that people respond to, consumers respond to, um, they like it. So there are actually three main pieces from it. If you want the entire checklist, it is free. There's a link up in the description of this video. Use that link, opt in, get the full checklist. I go through everything because everything you do, every tweak you make, changes your results, gives you higher results, and lowers your ad costs. So we're going to talk about the three top ones that are the most important, especially when you're running ads, even on your posts that you're doing. Hi, Misty. Hi from Charlotte. Okay, so I did say it right the first time because Alfredo, or Alfredo, when I actually said it, I was like, no, that's, that's the dish. Fettuccine Alfredo. So that was correct. Sorry. Thank you for clarifying that. I love that. Um, 
you guys are awesome. Thank you. Okay, so let's do this. The top three pieces, and if you want all of them so that you can do as much as possible, get the, the checklist. It is free. I just asked for your email so I can email you the checklist. But the checklist is free. And I'm not selling anything with the checklist. So you're just good. Just just do that. Um, so the first thing, the first thing is, and this is the hardest, guys. I really think this is the hardest because we believe so much in why we do this. Um, but the why that we, the why we believe it is actually flawed. And I'm going to explain this. Your Facebook business page name. Guys, your Facebook business page name should not be your name. Should not be homes for sale. Should not be your team name, your brokerage name. Mm -mm, it shouldn't. Here's why. A couple of reasons. Number one, Facebook. If you put Jane Doe Realtor on your page name. Okay. First of all, if you ever get married or divorced, um, Jane Doe Realtor, Cobalt Banker, let's just say that. Okay. If you ever get married or divorced or you change companies or your broker dies and, and the brokerage goes to a different franchise or your broker sells and the brokerage goes to a different franchise or your broker goes bankrupt and the broker goes to a different franchise. And I'm just going to let you know that two or three of those have happened in our whole life uh, or our whole business time. If any of those things happen, um, marriage, divorce, uh, change name, whatever, it's next to impossible to get your Facebook page name changed through Facebook. So when you're investing time and money, money and resource, like other resources into your page and you can't change the name, you have to abandon it. And that sucks. So for example, if you're with Remax, we were with Remax and we had set everything up so that the only thing, if we ever had to change, the only thing we would ever have to put, do anything anywhere is change the logo everywhere and change the brokerage name. And so we did not have it in our domains. We did not have it in our, at the time, Facebook page. I know there was not a, there really, we didn't have a Facebook page for the business at the time. This was back in 2004. Um, that this happened or 2001, it's somewhere in the early 2000s before Facebook. And our broker decided to actually partner with another two people. And so let the Remax franchise go and went with GMAC. So that's what happened. So that was out of our control. We stayed with the same brokerage. We didn't leave anything, but that changed. Then in 2009, um, when we were with GMAC, we saw this coming and I had already set everything up. We did not have, our page name was not um, related to our franchise. Our website was not related to our franchise, nothing. Now we had all the disclosures everywhere, you guys. However, none of the, nothing was like, I could change everything really easily. And our broker, our brokerage went bankrupt. Like literally, boom, bankrupt. The next day we were officially unlicensed, although we were, because you have to be with a broker, but although we were prepared and within 24 hours, we are we had our own brokerage up and running. We'd our, we knew this was coming, so we prepared. But here's the thing, a lot, a lot of people didn't know it was coming. And nobody had Facebook pages back then. This was 2009, beginning of 2009, nobody in our brokerage had Facebook pages except us. So here's the thing, you it's almost impossible. And even if you, even there is a trick to being able to change your Facebook page name, even if you know that trick, you can get away with it once, maybe twice, and then it's, no, you can't. So the key is you do not want to put um, that something that possibly could change. That's, that's, I mean, gosh, if you're in the business long enough, it's going to change. Something's going to happen. Something's going to change. Even if you owned your own brokerage, you may sell it. You may decide not to have, have your own brokerage for whatever reason. Just be aware of that. So that's number one. Number two reason why your page name should not be your stuff. Because nobody gives a flying fig about you. If there are people that you do not know, which is why you have a Facebook business page, is out to meet your unmets, they don't care about you. They care about themselves. They care about their lives. They care about the lifestyle. They care about their dreams. So when they see an ad or a page that says Jane Doe Realtor Cole Baker or Remax or Century 21 or Cole Baker or Keller Williams, it doesn't matter the franchise, just I'm using Cole Baker as an example. Um, when they see that, they're like, their first reaction is, I'm not going to respond to this. I'm going to hide the ad. Um, they're just going to sell me, etc." In other words, your conversions suck. 
They suck because people are turned off. It's not about them. It's about you. Your page needs to reflect their hopes, their dreams, their aspirations through the lifestyle. You need to be lifestyle focused. It's kind of like doing a passion page. REI owns um, or has a camping page. They have a hiking page. They have a a climbing page. They have a rowing page. They have all kinds of different pages around passions that people have. Okay. That's what you don't want all kinds of different pages. You want one, one as a real estate agent, you are a local real estate agent. You want one page. So you want that page to be around people's lifestyle. This is why you'll see a lot of like homes and lifestyle or living or life in or things like that. You want one keyword. No, a county is not a keyword. No, North Virginia is not a keyword. I mean, like, No, you need to narrow this down. So you need to have a page name that reflects the passion of the people that you're trying to connect with. I live in Idaho. If I were to do Idaho homes and lifestyle, hello. I mean, if you've ever been out here, it's a big state. I do not, I don't care if I'm licensed in Idaho and I could potentially get the deal in Boise and I'm in Coeur d'Alene. No, that's eight hours away. Be realistic. Even from Coeur d'Alene to Sandpoint, that's an hour away. I'm not going to sell in Sandpoint. So there are some people that will focus on one town, focus it down. Coeur d'Alene Homes and Lifestyle, um, Dubuque Homes and Lifestyle, um, even Phoenix might be too big, Phoenix Metro or name it the outlying areas. The point is passion focused, lifestyle focused. That right there will hugely increase your results from your ads, your responses. It'll lower your costs almost immediately. That's like the big win, the big one. All right, number two, your header photo. We are so excited to put houses and I'm a real estate agent and buy from me and sell, sell, sell in our header photos. And guys, that's a friggin' turn off to everybody. Nobody likes it. You know what they like? You know what they connect with in the header photo? They connect with an air, a piece of architecture, a sculpture, Um, an area view, something about the area. You are trying to connect, socially connect with people you do not know about something you have in common. And that is where you live. You need to reflect that. Um, uh, Examples like for our area here, uh, it's it's about the lakes. It's it's so much about the lifestyle here, four season lifestyle from um, hiking, from mountain biking, water skiing, jet skiing, alpine skiing, cross-country skiing. It is about the lifestyle, the outdoor lifestyle here. So one of the biggest things we were able to use was I took some pictures of the lake, like some of the best pictures that reflected what it's like to live here. So what is it like to live in your area? What do you guys love? I mean, like if you're in Philly, the the art museum steps. I mean, hello, Philly's known for Rocky. Uh, I mean, it's known for a whole lot of other things. The whole, the row, the oldest road in America. The, things like that. So that, that's just a Philly example. Wherever you are, what do you have? I mean, like even here, I don't have to use the lakes. Lake, if I was trying to go for a crowd that had younger children, I would use the Muggsy and Millie thing. If you have younger kids and you know those stories, that's great. The author lives here and there are decorated moose all over the place. They're really kind of cute. Um, and they're iron sculpted moose. I would do that. So find something that is related to your area. And here's a little side trip. This is a little bonus. If you think you don't take pictures well, your picture really has to be well taken. You have to own it. You have to own it. You take it or you buy it. You do not borrow it. You do not pull it off Google. This is a business. Be ethical. Stop breaking the rules by using other people's pictures. If they give you permission, get it in writing, guys. So here's what you do. Hire a a high school photographer to go out and take 100, 200 pictures for you. Pay them 100 bucks, 200 bucks, whatever it is. Have them take a ton of pictures. Tell them all the different areas that you want them to go take pictures in. And they get the use of those pictures and try some of those. So number one is your page name. Number two is your header photo. Hey, Tammy. Hi, Carmela. I'm just looking at the names over there so you guys join in. The number three one. That's another hard one for real estate agents. Like harder than I thought, okay? For that... Page, photo, you know, the headshot, the, the, the profile piece of that, the profile photo of your business page. So many of us want to use our logo or we want to use our professional headshots. 
guys, there's nothing more of a turnoff on your page that's about passion, about lifestyle, than to see a logo. People know immediately it's a sell. They know immediately, they feel immediately that they're going to be sold to. You don't want that. If you have your professional headshot on there, again, same thing. You are trying to connect with people on a, on a like a social connection basis on here. This is Facebook we're talking about. This is Facebook. When you're out volunteering for the Humane Society or Habitat for Humanity or even like chamber events, do you always stand in your professional headshot pose? No, you're a real person. You have like, you feel real, you look real. Be real in your, in that little profile photo. I'm talking about the business page. Be real in it. Take selfies. And I know that a lot of you struggle with this. You do. I know this because my members have brought it to my attention. I did not realize how big of a struggle this was until they did. Guys, it's a selfie. Take your phone. Take your phone, I can't see it here. Take your phone and play with selfies. And for all you ladies that are really worried about, you know, looking heavy in your in your selfies, et cetera, in your selfie picture or whatever, let me do it, do you a favor. I don't even think you can see this. Do not take a selfie where your nose is in the middle of the picture. You don't want the, the camera at the same level as your face. You don't want it below your face, you're gonna look a lot heavier. You don't want it here, you want it at an angle, see, uh, I'll do it, at an angle, right about at your forehead. That's where you want it. A little bit of an angle right about at your forehead. That will take the best, best pictures. And play around with the light, guys. Take a lot of selfies. You can delete them. Take a lot of selfies. You want selfies as your business page profile photo because you want people to connect and resonate with you. Stop being afraid to do it. Stop thinking it needs to be professional. It doesn't. People don't buy from brands. They buy from people. They need to feel like they can trust you. You're out building no like and trust relationships. This is a piece, believe it or not, that'll do it. It's just like your know, first impressions, first impression, that's what it is. Your page name, header picture, profile photo. If those three things are changed, your ad costs will go down, your ad conversions will go up. Guaranteed, happens every single time. I have seen it happen hundreds of times, those three things. There are more, there's more things, get the checklist. Just download it. It's free. I ask you for your email. I email you the checklist. It's a couple pages long. There's a there's several other areas that you can go in that each help your conversions, help your page, help everything. So go ahead and do that. Let me know. I know there are a few of you, um, especially members, that have made these changes and seen real results immediately. If you've done that, would you comment below and let me know as this goes into replay, etc. And you guys. You're awesome. Thank you. Keep bringing me your questions, your concerns, your thoughts. I'm going to be doing more episodes of The Ribbit Show. I'm doing more rep episodes of The Ribbit Show. Um, this is actually an, a Ribbit, Ribbit Show episode, even though I labeled it live. And I will be doing, obviously, more lives because I like you. I want to help you. I'm like you. I ha have struggled trying to get different platforms to work for me. And I don't want you to struggle. I want you to be able to get Facebook to work for you. It will work. Those three things that I just talked about today, those will change your results on Facebook almost immediately. All right, you guys, have a great day. Thank you for your time. Ask me more questions. I'll answer them. Talk to you later.